Welcome back ladies, I am Amity Rose and I'm so glad you're with me today. We are talking about how to stop obsessing over food and weight. So obsessive thinking can be really tough to deal with. We just get bombarded by all these thoughts and they're racing and oh my God, if I eat this or I'm gonna gain weight if I eat this, if I eat this, will I lose weight and if I don't, blah, blah, blah. I mean it'll drive you nuts, right? So here's the thing, thoughts are fleeting. They are not ours. They do not belong to us. They are simply mental images moving through space. They only really cause problems when we decide to make one of them true. You can think of them as clouds floating through the sky, right? And you're just watching these clouds and they're floating on by and some may feel good and some may not feel good and some may feel just darn right awful, right? But what happens when we decide to pull those clouds down and make these thoughts true, I can't eat this. If I eat this, I'll gain weight. That's where the trouble starts. And then they start coming and we're pulling them all down, just one at a time, and then we are just in a panic. We're in anxiety. We're just frozen in that moment. We can't even move forward because these thoughts have become paralyzing. So I'm gonna talk to you today about kind of what's going on there and ways that we can shift that. The reason this is happening is because it's a well ingrained, established habit. This has probably been happening for a really long time. So your body knows how to do this. The neural pathways in the brain have been carved out. You know this behavior. This is what you do. This is known. And it basically happens unconsciously. It's happening and you're five miles down the road before you even notice what is happening. You're there paralyzed by thoughts and you can't even move forward. So what you want to do first is accept. Accept that you are having obsessive thoughts about weight and food because anything that we resist persists. So fighting against it in any way is just gonna cause more and more trouble. It's also gonna make it stronger. So if you think about, you have two options, engage in the obsessive thinking and not engage in it. And whichever one you pick feeds it and makes it stronger. So every time you choose obsessive thoughts or to pull down those clouds and to make these thoughts real for yourself, you are really feeding a beast that is just growing and getting bigger with each time you make that choice. So you wanna think of it that way, what am I feeding? Am I feeding this behavior or am I feeding a different behavior? Am I making a different choice? And with that, that choice will start to get stronger and hopefully that's a more healthy life generating choice for you and that will get stronger over time the more that you make those types of choices. So this is why you wanna make sure you're in full acceptance of what is happening. Acceptance opens the flow. It allows the clouds to just come and roll through. Eventually they will stop, but resistance will cause all sorts of trouble that we don't want to continue to create. Now in addition to accepting that we're in obsessive thinking, the next thing to remember is in order to heal the body, you must be in the body. So you wanna be able to recognize when you're in your mental body and when you're in your physical body. So when we're engaged in this obsessive thinking, when we're just letting these thoughts take over, our conscious awareness is in the mental body. We are with those thoughts. We have disconnected from the physical body and we're in the mind. Now, what we want to do is move the consciousness, move the awareness from the mind, from the thinking into the body. And we can do this a few different ways. The first, just most amazing, my favorite thing ever, is the breath. We have access to the breath all the time. If it stops, we stop. This is our most important, potent tool to healing, your breath. Start noticing your breath. Start breathing on purpose, with intention. You've got the thoughts, you've accepted them, you bring the awareness into the body and you take a deep inhale. Magic. You are out of the thinking mind, you are into that body in one second. A few extra tools that can help you is grounding. 
So let's say you are standing on the ground. You want to feel your feet into the earth. Just bring that awareness into the ground. How are your feet standing? How is the weight distributed on your feet? Can you feel the connection from the bottom of your feet to the earth? If you're in a chair, do something similar with your bum. Can you feel the chair supporting the bum? Can you feel your bum where it attaches to the chair? This is just grounding the body into the earth. Again, moving the energy away from the mind and into the body, into the ground. So this will help bring our conscious awareness down into the body, where the healing and better choice making can happen. The third tool that will help you here is anchoring. We want to start building our self resourcing kit where we don't have to rely on other people, other things, external items in order for us to find what we need. These tools will help you. Anchoring is finding a point in the room and attaching to it. So wherever you are, if you can find a house plant or the sink or a picture on the wall, gaze at the picture, lock into the energy so you're finding the picture and whatever you've chosen is acting as an anchor and it's bringing you into the room, into the present moment because that's where we wanna be. When we're lost in obsessive thinking, we are really just having anxiety about the future. So coming into the present, which these tools will do for you, is really where we want to be. That's where we can access our intuition and we can listen to the body and we can follow the body's direction instead of the thinking mind. So in that moment, when you ground in, when you have breath, when you tune into the body, the body will let you know what to eat, where to eat, I don't want that, how much, you can trust your body to let you know. What you need to know is how to move the energy from the thinking mind into the body, into the present moment. Another one of my favorite tools is mantra, which literally means an instrument to tame the mind. You can try chanting OM, either externally or inside, and the sound current from the mantra will actually shift and change the obsessive thinking. It has the power to obliterate the obsessive thinking that you're engaging in. You can find anything. If you're not associated with Sanskrit words or that practice, you can use an affirmation. I can trust my body. I am worthy. I love you. Anything that really will stop the flow of the obsessive thoughts. This is a game changer. So in addition to grounding down, being in your body, you can throw the mantra in and that will help shift the obsessive thinking and change it all together. Last note I wanted to add is food is just food. It's not good or bad. It has zero power over you. And really coming to understand this, really coming to know that a donut is no better than a salad is gonna be really powerful for you on your self-love journey. As long as you still have this food is bad, this food is good, it's gonna be really hard for you to come out of the obsessive thinking because you're gonna be trapped in that thought of this is good and this is bad. So really coming to understand that sure, all food has different nutritional value and can add to the body differently, but everybody, because of our biological chemistry, breaks down and receives food very differently. So you have to do what is right for you. And the best thing right now is understanding that no food has any power over you. There's gonna be foods that you feel better eating and foods that make the body sick and you just wanna listen to that and that's all. But really understand that food is food and anything you eat has the power to give you nutrients even if it's something that you've deemed bad it can actually be good for you so watch out for that mental patterning that you have developed that says that this food is good and this food is bad or i shouldn't eat this i should be eating this because that's just another way that we can beat ourselves up and you don't need that you want to be building yourself up instead of breaking yourself down so remember that tool. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a thumbs up. In addition, subscribe. I release two videos a week, all based on how to love yourself and your body. It is my prayer that this information reaches all who need it. 
and I love you. I will see you next week. Welcome back. And today, full of because that that so anchor so the main focus here well what you will actually shift that will after and that is gonna be really powerful you on. Uh,